If you're ready to get started, I am too. I want to start in my sky. I do have liquid white up in here. I probably should have put some. This is going to be water here. I probably should have put some here, but I just forgot. But I'm going to start. And I have these mountains kind of drawn out, but I'm not sure that I like them, <laughs> to be quite honest. I want it pretty light behind my mountains. I want it really light back here. I'll think it looks better when it's light behind the mountains. That's why I usually that's why I start here a lot of times before I get my brush all contaminated with blue because it's usually darker in the corners. But I'll start right here because I want it light. And I don't put any liquid white on my mountains most of the time. Just make it a little darker. You can't really see that. Yeah, I don't know if I like this form or not. But the shape I have these mountains. We don't have to follow it. We make our own shape if we want to. We're going to get a little darker as we're coming out. I got a one inch brush here. I'll switch over here in a minute to a two, more than likely. Oh, let's take a little bit of phthalo blue. I'm just going to randomly throw it in here. I definitely want it darker up in here. Definitely want it darker. I'm going to have pine trees. I'll probably be covering most of this. Let's make it even a touch darker in these corners. If I can get some Prussian blue without make it too dark. Prussian blue is very dark. Very strong. Here, here's my palette. I just got, I got caught. I just finished with the painting. I got stuff just mixed everywhere. I have a light mountain collar and a dark mountain collar. In case I want to put some distance in one of these mountains, that would get the lighter color. Okay, that's probably about as far down as I want to come because this stuff here will really get bad. Let me give me a clean brush. Let me make sure it's clean. Always test your brushes because I, I clean them, but you never know. Okay, I'm going to start right in here. Start on the lighter part. And I'm going to work my way out. Crisscross stroking, work my way out. Just give it the old crisscross. Just like that. it off if you want to. Let's blend it a little more right in here. Uh, I think that's okay. I'm going to have some pine trees here. Right over in here. I think that's probably all right. All right, let's get to the fun part. Let's start on our mountains. I may not have, I just don't know yet. I may not have a further back mountain. Okay, let's just go ahead and start. We'll figure it out as we're going along. I don't have any liquid white on these mountains. And I, and I say this every time I do a mountain because there's a lot of people that are new to the channel and they might wonder why I'm doing something a certain way. But I don't do it because sometimes people at home want to learn to do this and they have trouble making their paint break. And the reason is, is because you do have liquid white on here. Just leave it off your mountains. You don't have to have it. It's not a rule. 
and your paint will break a whole lot easier. You'll be happy you did it, I promise. That's 99% of the problem. Because this liquid white, even though I love it, I use it every, almost every painting practically. If you're new to making your paint break, trying to get your paint to break and you're painting at home, that will cure the problem. That's 99% of the problem. Don't put liquid white on here. Yeah, I think I'm just... I think I'm just going to keep doing this and we're just going to figure out what we're doing as we're going along. Because I don't really like this design I put on here today. I, I got it off another painting I did a long, long time ago. And, and it fits the painting that I did a long, long time ago, but I'm not sure if it's going to fit this painting very well. I think that looks okay right there. Bring it down. Now, if you don't put liquid white on here, it's not going to blend as easy. That's, that's the one thing I don't like about not using liquid white on the mountains. But I do love liquid white. I mean, it's great stuff. I mean, it is. It really is. But you see these other guys on TV doing it, and they make it look real easy because they've done it a thousand times. But if you're just starting out, until you get used to using it, don't put it on here. You'll save yourself a lot of aggravation. Okay, that's pine trees there. All right, let me see here a minute. Let me pull some of this out. Here's my water line. Pine trees over in here. I'm just going to take a one inch brush. Actually, I might just use this dirty one. I, now I'll save it for the water. I'm going to use a one inch brush. I'm going to set my palette down. Get my roll of paper towels in my hand. And I'm going to pull this out until I think it's pulled out enough. And I think that's probably pulled out enough with my pine trees. And I'm going to pull it this way. So here's our water line right here. I think this is plenty of paint I have on here. And we're just going to work our way down to the water line. But always pull your paint out because you're, you're getting excess paint off. You don't need it. You don't need all this thick paint on here. So we're just going to do this. I'm going to pull it over here to where I think it's far enough. And that is probably far enough right in there. I'm kind of winging this painting today. I, ha I have an idea. I have a painting right here beside me, but, which I got some of this composition from. It's not a bad composition. I just, I just don't like the mountains in it too well. <laughs> All right, I guess we're ready now. Let me grab my palette. Okay, I'm going to start with my big knife. I may have to switch here in a minute. And I'm going to take some white. I'm, I'm going to stick it right here just for easy access. I'm right-handed. This is on the corner. It's perfect. And I'm going to start right here. And I am going to start putting some stuff on here. I'll go ahead and work this edge a little bit. We're just going to work the edge. We're going to bring her down. I may have to set this down. i got to keep wiping things off. I'm gonna keep bringing her down. Okay, I'll grab it again. I can't make my mind up here. It's easier if I hold it, but I also have to wipe my knife off. 
whatever's easiest. Start here. Now I am barely holding this knife, and, I'm, and then my, my knife is almost flat to the painting. It's not tilted like this. It's almost flat. So that's that's a good way to do it. And I'm literally barely touching it. And that's with no liquid white. So you can imagine if you had liquid white on here, you'd really have to be careful. I'm going to start right here on this one. And you know we're just we're just using our imagination here where we think things need to be. There's no, there's not a pattern or. You just use your imagination and take your time. See, I'm taking my time. Don't get in a rush. There's no need to rush, especially if you're at home. I have to rush a little bit so I don't lose your interest. But you don't you don't have to rush. There is no reason to rush if you're painting at home. None whatsoever. Let me give me some more white. Man, I always run out of white, and I don't care how much I put out. Seems like I'm always running out. We're going to bring this on over this way a little bit. Let's see, I think I might close this up a little there. Maybe close that up. Probably for sure close this up. See, I, I like how that's looking already. I like it. Your mountains is obviously the main feature of a painting. Everything else is just there. <laughs> but you got to have a decent looking mountain if you can. I mean, that's pretty important. Let me just take some of this color I made. I was going to use this for a far away mountain. I'm not sure how this will look. Let me just touch it. Yeah, I think you can see it. Yeah, I hope it's light enough. I may have to touch a little white in that. Let's see what a little white will do. I don't want too much. Hmm, I must put too much in there. Let me mix it. See, this is this was the color I was going to use for a faraway mountain. Now that I don't have a faraway mountain, I'm really running low on white. So I can scrape some up over here. Let's see how this looks here. Let me touch it. It's a little lighter. I think this might work. As long as you can see it at home, that's that's the object of what I'm doing here. If you can see it at home, then it's good. Sometimes if you put it under too dark, you can't see it at home. And we're just, I'm just getting a little roll like they say to do on TV. Except I'm barely touching it. I got a big hair or something in this paint. <laughs> We're just going to bring her on down here. Let me put a little bit up here where I put that white. I don't cover that up. So you can cover stuff up. I don't think that's too bad. Stand back and look. All right, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's go ahead and start working on this. Let's go ahead and put some collar down. I'm going to go ahead and start working on this water a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to look at my picture. Well, I think it goes about over in here. I'll go ahead and bring it over. I, I'm not sure it'll be this far over. The water is a little darker today in some areas. I believe this is land, some of this. I'll bring it on over in case I change my mind. I change my mind a lot. Some of you know that. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. You adapt with your painting. 
you don't have to stick with a certain plan you change as the painting changes if you see something needs to be done you just do it change it it's okay it's your painting you can do whatever you want with it okay i'm gonna start to darken this a little bit let me pull this out a little i want to get it dark down in here for sure was, this is my testing area Let's see how dark it is This is all dry down here. This is why I have to scrub it. That's okay. I like working on a dry canvas. You know, when a canvas is wet, that's really your enemy because the oil itself stays wet. And then you make, then you wind up making a lot of mud. When you put oil over oil, it just becomes a disaster after a while. So I'd rather work on a dry canvas. All it requires is a little bit of scrubbing. I'm not sure how far my land's going to come over, so I'll put a little bit more in this area. So I don't have to redo it later. That's probably okay, I think. This is actually all land right here. This is going to have some quite a bit of pine trees, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it will. Well, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to fill in this land off camera so I don't spend too much time wasting your time and then I'll be back all right let's go ahead and put us some pine trees in here across through here I'll wipe some of that off and I may even wipe some more of that off now that I'm looking at it I've got a shop towel right here and I'm just going to run it across there and wipe some of this off I should have done this before I poured, put the camera on, but this will give you an idea of what to do sometimes if you want to. I don't want all that paint there. You can use a paper towel too, it don't matter. I just happen to have shop towels. There, that'll get some of that paint off right there because I don't want it there. <laughs> so let's take some, we can take some black and some green. Here's some black, here's some sap green. And we can start anywhere we want. And I'm going to go ahead and stick them in the water as we're going along. And this will be our reflections also. Black, green. Okay. Wipe your brush off a little bit. This is how you make easy pine trees in the background. you got to have something here at the mountain base typically and this painting you do for sure and I'm going to run them all the way across because I honestly don't know I think I need to probably come over here to this line I don't know how far to come over quite yet so to save me some trouble later I'll just bring it on over Just keep getting your black and your green. Wipe your brush off on occasion because it cakes up on you. And I'm going to come all the way over here. Sun's coming down this way today. We're going to put our nice bright highlights on it like we always do. So let me get me a smaller little brush here. Brush is a little stiff. I used it yesterday and didn't wash it, but I think it's okay. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm just going to touch, touch some of these trees right up in here. It don't have to be pretty. I just want some kind of collar so, so you can see it. And you'll know that there's some sun hitting it. The 
And see, this is the quick, easy way to do stuff. These trees are far, are far back. You don't have to take forever to do them, necessarily. You want them to look good, but you don't have to spend a ton of time on them. And we also want some reflections that are in the water. Sometimes I put red trees across through here and they always look really good. But I can't do it every painting because then every painting would look the same. <laughs> so I got to switch it up. I want you to get bored. Now I'm going to take a brush, get a paper towel, make sure there's nothing on my brush. I'm going to keep wiping my brush off after every stroke so the paint don't build up. This is how you get your reflections in. I'm sure there's a different way to do it. But this is how we do it. And you want to go side to side. Is it that watery look? Okay, now we'll put us a water line in and get that over with. It's probably too much white. Just pull you out a little paint. On your knife and just come on across there's our water line all right now what I did is I went ahead and put some pine trees in put a touch of grass there put my water line in and I'm still not made my mind up about this path I still don't know about this path yet but what I am going to do is I'm going to highlight these some of these pine trees and show you how we do that in case you've never seen it some some of you have a lot of you have but I am just going I like to highlight it with a real bright yellow sun's coming down this way and I am just going to barely I got to get me a paper towel in my hand I am just going to barely touch the edges of these pine trees and bring it in got to wipe your brush off after each and every time and you got to get a pretty good load of paint this is cad yellow light but, but by me doing this I'm separating these trees and, and I just think it looks good doing it this way I'm, I'm making a separation So you will definitely know where each tree is. If I didn't, you can't, I mean, you can't tell. They all look, so it looks like a big blob of paint. And that's not what we want. The sun should be hitting this tree all the way down through here. Let's get us another blob of paint on our brush. I like saying that word blob apparently don't I? And see you gotta determine which trees in front of which. This tree here, and I may change this as we go along, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that that tree I'm working on now is probably behind this tree, just by look just by looking at it. So I'm going to come down a little bit and I'm probably going to stop right there for now. And then I'm going to start on this tree. Start coming down. I'm not going to make you watch me do all of them, but I just want to get you started. 
But this is how I highlight these pine trees like this. Brings out the separation. And I just think it looks good. Let's see. I know this tree's in front. This tree here might be in front of this tree, so I'll kind of slow down a little bit there. You got to make these fine decisions. Which tree is in front of which? These fine distinctions. And we'll just bring this on down. So probably right in here. So this tree is blocking some of that light on the tree that I just did. Well, I'm just going to keep doing this. I'll go ahead and hit them other trees, and I think I might finally make my mind up about the path and then work on some grass and we'll take it from there. I think I got a spot of black right there. I'm going to have to work that out somehow. I think my hand may have touched it. You can fix it as long as your paint's still wet. I mean, you, I mean, you can fix it later too if you wanted, but it's a lot easier to do if your paint's wet. That's the benefit of oil painting. can be forgiving. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start putting some type of grass down. I still haven't made my mind up yet about this path, but I got to do something. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't just stand here. I'm going to go ahead and work on the grass. We're going, and then maybe that'll help me. I'm going to work on the grass and maybe that'll help. That's what we're hoping. Um, let's see what this color is. Okay. I think I want to start right in here. I think I'm going to start right here. I'm coming out pretty far. Probably shouldn't come out that far, but I am. I am going to wipe my brush off. I'll just have to fill this in with things. Some type of things. I'm not sure what. I'm pretty sure the sun's still probably hitting down in here in this area. And it's probably hitting right in here. I'm using a fan brush basically just because I like to use a fan brush. On this type of thing. I'll go ahead and bring this on up here. This grass may help me make a decision on what to do with that path. I'm going to get it, grab a little bit more green, some ochre. I'm going to start changing the collar a little bit. And as it comes closer to you, it'll be getting darker. And you can make the grass a little bit rougher if you, whoa, didn't want all that, boy, I had a clump that time. And the grass can be a little, have a little more texture in it, that's what I'm trying to say. If that's what you wish. Start putting some more green in this. stuff on this brush. I may switch over to some Prussian blue. It's not quite dark in there. I apologize. I got my head in your way. I'm trying to figure out which pile I have here. I think this is Prussian blue. You start at this time of day. I have quite a few piles going on here. I want it darker down in here, even right in here. 
Uh, I may take some lizard and crimson. I'm going to go ahead and use it to, since I have it in my hand, just to use it up. More Prussian blue. Throw some of this color in, which I don't know what color it is, but it'll make this Prussian blue stand out a little bit if I can get any on my brush. Here we go. I'm obviously going to have my crazy looking bright colored bushes in here. Maybe even some rocks. So I'm wanting this path to look like it falls back into the distance, into the trees. Sure is dark right there, isn't it? Maybe too dark. See, I'm pushing up on my brush as I'm coming down. I want it dark, I just don't want it black. That's probably better. Probably better right there. Alright. Okay, I'm going to still try to figure out what I'm going to do with this path. But this looks better. I think I can figure something out now. I'll be back. Alright, we're getting closer. Getting closer to the end. Let me wipe this I got some stuff here running off. All right, I put some rocks down here and I've got some bushes right here. I'm gonna make these nice and bright like I do in almost all my paintings. I just like bright colors. I think I just think they're happy, you know, nice, bright, shiny colors. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on these rocks. Sun's coming down this way. I'm at least go ahead and get started on them, put some highlight on them. They, they get a lot of colors, but this is just a start. All I've basically done is just put some brown and yellow ochre in these is all I've really done so far. So they're, we're just getting started on them. I think I'm going to leave the path the way it is. I mean, I think it's fine. And we're just going to keep doing this for a moment. I'll have to come back and work on these later. I, I usually put yellow oak or burnt sienna, many different colors in here. I'm just going to do a few more rocks. I'll finish these rocks probably off camera. And then I'll go ahead and do the bushes on camera. I like them nice and bright. Nice bright bushes. Okay, let me set my palette down. Let me find me a brush. I think I might use my granddaughter's brushes again. These these brushes are cheap, but man, I mean, you know, you can find uses for things. And this seems like a good brush for a bush this size. I'm going to use one of my favorite colors, and you probably know what it is, Cad Red Light. Let's see. Let me open up the bristles. You do that by tapping. Yeah, let's see what this is going to look like here. I have to wipe it off each and every time. Now I'll probably take some white and highlight it with some white. Just for another effect. I'm going to make this one uh, blue. So you pick up a lot of black. I just put these down. Let me hit it one more time. As long as I don't make a mess. Let's 
Just make it a little brighter if I can. There, it looks a little better. You got to be careful how much, how many times you tap it because <laughs> you'll make a, it'll get worse and worse and worse instead of better. Let me just take a touch of white. Just kind of really try to brighten it up a little and see if this will do anything. Yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Another little touch of white. Yeah, just tap your... See, it opens, I don't know if you can see it, it opens up the bristles a little bit when you tap it. Mm. I almost hit that one too many times. I see some black showing through. Let me try it one more time. One more time here. I probably better leave that alone. That looks fine. Now let's work on our blue. I, I was calling this cerulean blue, but it's spelled S-U-R, let me see, just for curiosity's sake, in case you want to know, S-E-R-U-L-E-A-N, Ceru cerulean, I don't know, but anyways, you know how it's spelled now, just in case you want to know, I really like this collar. Especially when you put a little white in it. Let me get a little white and touch it. Don't look too bad. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is finish my rocks, and that'll be it. See you in a minute. All right, I think I'm getting ready to do something I hope I don't regret. I'm going to put a big, big dead tree right here. This painting is actually pretty dry. This painting's been sitting around, but before, and I started looking at it, and I thought, I thought something's missing. Something's missing right in here. I should have brought more mountains, but that's okay. Hopefully we can fix it by putting a big dead tree right here. This painting's probably been sitting around, I don't know, five, six days. I, it's, it was one I was going to post on YouTube, and I thought, man, something is missing. So hopefully I don't mess this up. Because um, if you mess this up, the whole, painting, <laughs> the whole painting is messed up. I believe... I think I'm gonna start it right here. It's gonna be a pretty, pretty good sized one. That's my plan. Black and brown is what I got. And like I said, this is dry, so this ain't gonna. I'm gonna have to put some thick paint on here. Black and brown. I'm trying to determine where I want to bring it. I could bring it completely out of the picture. I don't know. We're going to see. You got to take a chance sometimes. And this is this is called taking a chance. <laughs> um, oh boy, I think I'm gonna bring it out of the picture. Just take it on down. Make it a pretty good sized one. Yeah, too late now. I've done it now, haven't I? I've already done the dirty deed. But this tree is dead. I don't want any wider than that. It almost went too wide. But it's a big tree. I don't know. We'll see how it looks in the end. I didn't make it too wide up there. 
can't really take the paint off once you put it on, can you? Black and brown. Black and brown. I'm almost out of black, so I'll take some raw umber, which is almost black, finish it out. It might be okay. I definitely got to put some nice dead branches and stuff on here. Let me find. Mm, there it is. I'm using a filbert brush. I got a smaller one here. Let's see. We definitely want some dead branches here and there. Oops. So we'll go ahead and start throwing some dead branches in. It's actually kind of hard to see the limbs with these dark pine trees behind it. But I'll lighten all this up here in a minute. So we got to be real careful. Wherever you put them, they're going to stay. <laughs> this painting is pretty dry. Let's put one right here. I'll have to get my liner brush out too. Make some. I'm probably have to get a smaller one of these out too. I'll make some small little branches and stuff here and there. Yeah, let's put one right here. I'd like this tree to look as gnarly as I can, as old and rough as I can make it look. Let's see, got four branches there. Mm, if I want another one down here or not. I guess I do. Since I put one in. Okay. Right, let me get to putting some highlight material on that, or some different colors, I should say. I'm going to go ahead and get my big brush back. And I'm going to take some yellow ochre, some burnt sienna. Normally I run white down at first, but let me just get some of this stuff in here. I'm just wanting to put some kind of coloring on it. It's really wet. Actually, I probably should just take my, I think I will, take my shop towel. And if you guys never seen anybody do this, this is, this is how you do it. You can use paper towels and do the same thing. Make sure this is nice and dry. But this painting, the rest of it is dry. So this shouldn't hurt anything just to lay this down here. You can let them set too sometimes, but I'm trying to soak up some of this oil so I can put my stuff on here, put my collars. See, that's that much oil that's not on there. Let me find me another dry one. This one looks pretty good. And I'm going to stick it right here at the bottom. Now, if this painting was wet, I really couldn't do this very easily. But everything is dry except for this tree I just put on here. And sometimes you can do it that way. I mean, do whatever is easiest for you. Let your painting set around and dry. And then you can do this. Here's that one. But that just soaked up a lot of that paint, which is good. Now let's try this. This this will help a lot. I'm just wanting to put some color on it. And I like the way yellow ochre and burnt sienna look. My 
smaller brush. I like how they look together. I'll wind up getting a real small brush here in a minute. But I just want to show you my crazy idea of a tree here in the front. I come up with some crazy stuff sometimes. Okay, I'm going to keep working on this old dead tree and see how we can make it look. Alright folks, looks like that's it. I got my big dead gnarly tree in there like I wanted. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more future videos. And thanks for watching.